the nativity is part of a much larger megalithic formulation. The ancient people of Cairn created a megalithic structure which took them 6,000 years and several hundred thousand individual sites to create. Jesus was born under one of them. That specific megalith was on top of or over the cave that he was born in, which is the cave of the nativity. At least that is what Empress Helen, mother of Constantine, discovered. The ancient megalithic grid of which the cave of the nativity is absolutely a part of is proved part of the ancient megalithic measurement grid by the simple examination of the cave of the nativity the church of the nativity which remodeled the megalith into a first a temple and then a church is bisected by the causeway of the Pippin the First Pyramid, which is about one mile south of the Dozier Pyramid. All roads lead to Rome. Is a phrase that Caesar stole from Egypt when he invaded and conquered Egypt. He stole all roads lead to Rome and then promptly had the infrastructure of the Roman road system built to, in a way, cover the information, which is a habit that the Romans did for 700 years before they invaded Egypt. The All Roads Lead to Rome is from another phrase. The Eternal City used to be called Memphis, not Rome. Caesar stole the name of all roads lead to Rome, all the roads lead to Memphis, Memphis being the eternal city, being a name for the Lutz bone, which is at the base of the skull. Technically speaking, there's two Lutz bones, depending on which culture you talk about. The bone at the base of the skull and the bone at the base of the spine. They're both the, the Cossacks is very difficult to destroy, as well as the, the bone at the base of the skull. These two situations, Caesar conquering Egypt and in reverse repeating the, the will of his ancestors, the Hyksos, conquering in reverse order what the Hyksos conquered, because the con Hyksos conquered Egypt and then the Middle East, Antolia, e the Aegean, and under the name Greek and Roman, then conquered Italy, and then had to, several hundred years later, backtrack and reconquer from Italy, Greece, the Aegean, Antolia, Middle East, Egypt. The grid of which the megaliths are the centerpiece of is how the Magi found the Church of the Nativity, which became the Church of the Nativity. They, they found the Nativity by researching the, the ancient megalithic grid. Now, the ancient megalithic grid is bisected by the Pepin the First causeway. The causeway is a remnant of the 2500 year BCE remodel of the Giza Plateau and from Giza down to Saqqara the 120 pyramids that are located in that in that area were remodeled from Stonehenge they all look like the most of them look like some version of Stonehenge a rock ring of, of pillars remodeled from from Stonehenge into pyramids between 32 and uh, 21, and the, the, that construction stopped when the Hyksos invaded, and the the people who were remodeling, which were most likely the Israelites, the ones that who could, left 
to avoid being persecuted to the extreme degree by the Hyksos, who have never loved, never liked, and have capital punishment shown violent tendencies toward the Israelites from the be beginning of written history to modern. The red line that you have been seeing between the Pepin the First Pyramid and the Church of the Nativity is better than laser light precision because lasers are straight. This requires a calculation that includes the, the curvature of the Earth because it's 200 and some miles away. The As you look down the Pepin the First Causeway, you see the remnants of the causeway several dozen feet of rock to the north and a little bit less evident to the south the 15 to 20 foot wide causeway that's the 15 to 20 foot wide cave that Jesus was born in 200 and some miles away the very center of that causeway is the very center of that cave all those miles away why is this important because Jesus was born within that megalithic infrastructure. That megalithic infrastructure is specifically designed measuring from fixed point to fixed point on the globe. There is eight, as you saw, there are 18 megalithic infrastructures drawing from, the, from each of the from 18 causeways out. Now the very center of those causeways is what I drew the line down and the very center of those causeways bisects the summit of Khufu, the summit of Gibraltar, the northern portion of the island of Sri Lanka, the various places that are key geographical and or key to the people of Cairn what was going on with them what they found important this grid measures and it measures on not a straight vertical and horizontal lines grid that's not only useful in 2D mathematics that's only useful in 2D measurements this is a, a global and astronomical measurement grid, which means it, it has the potential to be able to record electromagnetic fluctu fluctuations, which is, the, which is the key in how to measure C. Why is C important to the nativity? Because the man's name, at least has been recorded through history, has been Jesus of the Light as in teacher of the light so having him born in the grid directly on the grid by the inch he was born on the grid that measured light the measured electromagnetic fluctuations and electromagnetic fluctuations are built from are designed from and are carried out through the physical manifestation of both waves of light one of the C's in E equals MC square and and particles of light, the other C and MC square. The square part being more than one C. The infrastructure regarding the, the causeways from the Pepin the First causeway to the Nativity is how the Wise men from the east, the masters from the east, found the nativity. When they found the nativity, that's up to a great deal of speculation because the code, vertical, sacred, defined land, is the star of Bethlehem. Beth-la-ham. Beth, as in 
specifically designated area that is specifically for from the from Israelites. So it's an Israelite city, Beth. La is a is a Israelite name for God. So it's city, sacred God, Laham. Ham is the fountainhead of all Semitic tribes. Now the Star of Bethlehem has the code in it. The vertical, amber, sacred, defined land has the code. So, in truth, the Star of Bethlehem might have been not an actual star that guided the wise men. The Star of Bethlehem could have very easily been the ancient megalithic code from which the wise men knew that code birth of Jesus was going to be on the megalithic grid. The question was not if it was going to be on the megalithic grid. The question was going to be where, which location on the megalithic grid. That answer was mostly simple. Where on that grid the nativity was going to take place would be in the city that their parents would have to pay taxes and have the census taken and the census was taken in the city of the father's and the mother's birth. Nazareth does not mean the city that's an, that's an afterward name. Nazareth is the code. Mary of Nazareth is linguistically if you change it from Latin into hieroglyphic stands for Mary of Aten. In other words, another pronunciation for Mary of Aten would be Meritaten, the daughter of Amenhotep IV. The one documented pharaoh in Egypt who was a monotheistic God believer and he tried to make Egypt follow the one God concept. Which was, the Aten was a son, Jesus Christ, Jesus of the light. Aten was a, was was a big sun was it was a light. The star of Bethlehem was the code to know that it, what what family was going to be, was going to bear the next king of kings, and where on that grid. So they had the knowledge of where on the grid. They had the knowledge of when on the grid. Roman tax time is one day a year. They had the knowledge of when, they had the knowledge of where, and they had the knowledge of what family. How did the wise men know what family? Linguistically, Nazareth means the same as Pharaoh. Well, the Mary, Mary, hieroglyphic is M-E-R-I. Nazareth translates to guardian of the longhouse which is exactly the same thing that Pharaoh translates to. So, an ancient family who quite possibly were Pharaohs of Egypt and Mary and or possibly Joseph, since they're descendants of Jacob's line, could have been those descendants of the of that pharaonic line. So, is there any family in Egypt that were pharaohs that Mary of Nazareth has a very similar name to a pharaoh and or a pharaoh's family and or a type, possibly a female pharaoh in Egypt? Well, absolutely yes. The person who re- installed the Aten, which was Amenhotep IV, his eldest daughter, Meritaten, Mary, M-E-R-I, Aten, A-T-E-N, was a pharaoh. Her mummy has the right arm removed. It was ripped off after mummification. And if you look at the pictures, the 
arm was ripped off long after mummification, which means that she was ri the right arm, the pharaonic arm, was ripped off after by one of Ramses' descendants to hide the fact that Meritaten was a full pharaoh. So Meritaten was a pharaoh. So one of her possibly descendants, Mary of Nazareth, linguistically, when you compare 1350 BCE hieroglyphics, specifically internal family language hieroglyphics, common la common hieroglyphics and internal family hieroglyphics are, to, are in some cases two different languages. In some cases they're close, in other cases they're far, far away. So there's some there's some wiggle room in these definitions in this evidence. Meritaten and Mary of Nazareth have a very similar name. Meritaten, by legend, traveled to Northumberland to avoid the Hyksos rising up and performing a, the basically equal and opposite reaction, Newton's third law, from the 1550 BCE the Israelites performing a coup d'etat on the Hyksos and removing them from power, and then taking over, and then Amenhotep IV and Tut were the last of the, pharaoh of the pharaonic line of the 18th dynasty. The Meritaten and her family traveled to Northumberland to escape the Hyksos coming coup d'etat, leaving Tut in charge and in some way, possibly having Tut, telling Tut, Tutankhamun, when things are good, travel up with us and you'll be fine. You'll, you'll be the next pharaoh here. For some reason he chose not to. For some reason he chose to align himself with Ah and other military commanders who obviously had the family distinction who obviously had the alignment with the Avanti, the Hyksos, who were about to take over, a la Ramses, Ramses the second, Moses. That line was about to take over. Is there anything older than Meritaten that would connect to Mary of Nazareth and the Nativity and connect to where the fountainheads of monotheism started. Well, very quickly after leaving Antioch, Simon Peter did travel to Greece and then did a little bit of work in Greece, but someone who else who traveled there first and spent years in Greece was Paul, the Hyksos line descendant who, according to the Dead Sea Scrolls, all the primary people who knew Jesus called him the evil priest, called him the dark priest. Not because his skin color was dark, although that may be very well accurate, but because his philosophy was from the Hyksos, which was from ECU line. So, Paul made a beeline to the centerpiece of that of, of Greece. One of the, the capital city of Greece being Athens. So let's examine this for a second. A-T-E-N-S. That sounds from, very familiar to two words. A-T-H-E-N. So the Aten of Amenhotep the Fourth's name change, he changed his name to a follower of Aten, is the name of Athens. Add an H and you have the name Athens, as in Greece, the capital of Greece, Athens. Add an H to Aten, you have Athens. Meritaten's name is Mara Athens. Mary. Mary of Aten line, 
Mary of Nazareth, Jesus' mother. Strings together the fountainheads of where, monoth of where Christianity and Judaism came from. Athens' former name was Poseidon. It was conquered, and the name changed from Poseidon to Athens by wave after wave of monotheists coming out of the Egyptian, coming out of Egypt. The Hyksos might have forced the invasions, but that did not mean they did not take the Jews with them, the Israelites with them, and then and conquer the Middle East, leaving pockets of Jews in Tyre, Babylon, Phoenicia, Troy, and another key cities, the Hyksos left pockets of the of the Jews of the Jews behind to do whatever they they so chose, as long as the Hyksos were were they still controlled that city, and as long as the Israelites who were in those cities paid the paid the Hyksos taxes and they can go and every few years replenish their army supplies, as in men, material, equipment, keep their trade route, keep the trade route for the for the combat, the the supply lines going. You lo you conquer a city and then leave your people in charge, or at least the people who you can't you feel like you can easily go and reconquer them. Keep them in charge, and the supply lines can stretch a thousand miles, two thousand, three thousand miles, because every few miles, you, you another city that you that you control keeps feeding you supplies. Athens could be very easily understood to be. Jerusalem and the entire area of Greece previous to being called Greece the name the the words in that area could have very easily be translated to Israel just another every time the 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 Israelites are pushed conquered out of the area that they were inhabited they go they get build another one upper Egypt there's an Israel the west side of the Nile between Saqqara and Giza, according to the Aten drawing, is another Israel. Jerusalem has been Israel a couple times. Troy was a very small and very, did not last very long Israel. Troy, the name of Troy, is descendants of the footholder. The name Jacob translates to the holder of the foot. So Troy, the Trojans are descendants of Jacob. Whose foot? The foot of God. The foot of God on the Ben-Ben stone, which was by legend, the Ben-Ben stone is in Heliopolis. So God stood on the Ben-Ben stone and created the universe same city in the same location that Adam built the city of pillars IWNW same location same name descendants of the footholder the holder of the foot Jacob the foot of God northwest of Heliopolis by 330 degrees, which is almost exactly the same as my theorized center of Memphis, old name Lutz, that is northwest of where Jacob, Jacob went northwest of Lutz to the light place. That's 330 degrees. That's 320 degrees northwest. Heliopolis to DEPI is 330 degrees, give or take 
10 degrees, it's almost exactly the same. So that comes very close to Jacob used the same angle to get to the light place as the hometown of a renamed most could possibly be the hieroglyphic name for Eve half woman half snake Genesis 2 Genesis 3 and the snake was clever also the part of the part of the code for Cleopatra snake indicating that she was Jewish and the the Cleopatra her execution was not an execution it was an exile and Cleopatra was exiled to Northumberland because Augustus used the code North Umber land to let her supporters know where she was exactly the same behavior pattern as Medusa but it let her detractors feel superior by killing her. She's dead, so therefore she's no longer a threat to her supporters. We know where she is. She's in North Umberland. The assumed, the guessed at center of where Heliopolis used to be, the city of Pillars used to be, 320, 330 degrees to the town of DEPI, the hometown of Wedget, Jacob heads northwest at almost exactly the same angle to the light place and then builds his ladder. Which brings some very, very interesting connotations to the tome of, of Jacob, what it, what it exactly was, because it, by some accounts it was a blade with writing on it. The sword of Troy was a blade that had writing on it. It is quite possible the two are the same, one and the same blade. The information from that blade, the writing, linguistically makes that blade Translate to the Spear of Destiny, the Blade of Destiny. Yes, Longinus. The blade was a, was a title that went with the blade, not the name of the man. The name of the Roman soldier who performed the coup de grace onto Jesus at the crucifixion, which took place in the same exact area that the, that the nativity took place in, was a Roman soldier. Jesus' uncle was a council member. It means that Jesus' uncle, who was a documented council member, had to have, by law, land in Rome. If you were a Roman landowner, you had to, by the entire width and breadth of Roman law, if you were a landowner in Rome, you had to be in the army. If you were a landowner in Rome and you were in the army, you were not considered a soldier, you were considered an officer. So you automatically were given a commission. Which means that the officer Longinus, it is very easy to connect the dots inferring that Longinus was Joseph of Arimathea, which is one of the reasons why he would have had direct access to the items of the crucifixion that he then take, took to Northumberland. Those items were, of course, later on boxed up and shipped down to Glastonbury Abbey during the Pictish Revolt. It also gives a pretty good idea why the Picts hated the, the Northumberland Royal Army so much. The Picts are, by word definition, Umberland, Dark Land, 
the pixels are by definition ECU line descendants. So it would be ECU line descendants versus Amenhotep IV's descendants. The name of Scotland. Scotland and Abba land. You have, so Skoda was by legend either a princess from the deposed Hyksos time, 1600, 1500 BC, who her father sent her out to Ireland, to Scotland, to when the at the point of the coup d'etat, and Maritatin, who by legend was also sent that direction. The coup the Hyksos were deposed, and then the Hyksos rose back up, and the, the so both ends of that spectrum by legend, both both sides traveled to Northumberland, Ireland to be able to create new kingdoms, and by evidence of battles and evidence of other other things, the Hyksos, Pictish, in the UK, and the Northumberland continued battling, and continued battling, and continued battling, and continued battling until the late Middle Ages, when they were both evicted by the Mercia, the, the Mercia descendants, which are also known as the English royal family. The English royal family, Henry and the, the Henrys and such, press gained both of them out. Where'd they go? America. The by genetics that is. The name of Athens the Aten. Theseus that story might be compressed layers. Medusa has a direct connection with megaliths. Why? Because Medusa, a snake gorgon, snake is an insult for a dragon, fire or worm, dragon, the constellation Draco, which is where all the megaliths point at, and by legend, Medusa could turn you to stone. By looking at you, she could turn you to stone. Well, that is a deeply insulting, politically spun concept revolving around the, the entire concept of I can look at you and by using the megalithic infrastructure to, me to do measurements and such for measure from point A to point B in a variety of points, you know, from point A to point B to point C to point D to point E all the way, all the way through various aspects of your life. I can quite easily tell you the story of your life based on reading the megalithic infrastructure, reading the, the, the patterns of the flow of time. Jerusalem, J-E-R-A, is Nordic, is the Futhark language for time. The language of Hebrew and the Futhark are directly connected because the language of Futhark the runes is the language, the circle of the Futhark, the people of Cairn, the the, the the people who built the megaliths, most likely developed their language based on watching the cycles of nature, watching the, the, the patterns of shadows. Shadows operate by drawing in shadow circles on the ground. So you measure time by their shadows are in circles. They're in crescents. Well, a closed crescent represents the planet. The Futhark was built, most likely, by watching those, the patterns of those shadows. The language of Hebrew was developed by taking the, the sounds of the Futhark circle sequence, and building the geometry, the triangles and quadrangles of the sounds of Futhark into 
the the sounds of Hebrew. They take the sound that they wanted to make, point A at the first symbol in the Futhark circle, point B at the second, point C at the third, if there's any more sounds in that character, point four, point five, what have you. Hebrew itself, its parent is Futhark, which is in a circle. That circle came directly from, by legend, by most likely, the megalithic infrastructure, which is another connection between language of, of Hebrew was developed by the Hyksos when they were in charge of Egypt. There are Hebrew characters labeling the Hyksos after the 1550 coup d'etat. After the 1550 coup d'etat, there is Hebrew used to label the Hyksos. Dating Hebrew back to 1550 and the Futhark language back to at least a few hundred years before that. So the Jacob line Israelites and the Isiu a thousand time name, name change culture have been battling it out through the width and breadth of human history. Although before they were called Jacob, they were called Israel because the name Israel existed before Jacob did and whatever the behavior patterns that Isiu emulated were before him because his grandfather, Terah, attacked and destroyed the Tower of Babel, otherwise known as the Tower of the Ziggurat of Eridu. The Plates of Destiny, by legend, were, ta were taken out of that tower and taken by Terra, were given to Abraham. Abraham, when his father and brother were killed, Abraham then took them to Egypt, constructed El Bethel, east of El Bethel, the temple to God, west to east. The plates of destiny are most likely what was written on, at least part of the information of the plates of destiny was, was, was most likely written on the blade of destiny. The blade of destiny being the name of the spear of Longinus. Blade, spear. So the Iridu plates of destiny and the spear of destiny, Longinus, the pierced Jesus' heart. The plates of destiny were most likely written on that blade that his uncle had possession of. Why did his uncle have possession of them? Because that blade was owned by the Roman Empire from when the Roman Empire, Romulus and Remus, attacked and sacked, destroyed and razed the cities of, of Alba Longa and around. The city of Alba Longa was, by legend, founded by the princes of Troy. The descendants of the footholder, the footholder being the, the feet of God standing on the Ben Ben stone, the stone as in a defined, a specifically defined area, feet, vertical as in one foot down, one foot up. The foot holder. One foot down to, to earth, one foot up to heaven. Elevator. Jacob's elevator. Genesis 28. Built northwest of Lutz. The spear can be tracked backwards from Longinus to the Roman Empire, from the Roman Empire to Alba Longa, Alba Longa to Carthage, from Carthage back to Troy, from Troy back to Jacob, the area between Saqqara and Giza on the west side of the Nile, from there back to the Tower of Babel, from the Tower of Babel back to Adam. ECU line are extremely good at and have a 5,000 year history of lying. 
they twist the truth to make themselves look good from present almost daily definitely yearly at least once a decade the ECU line descendants tell big whoppers to hide truth and to disguise fact the cycles of time the cycles of nature Athens the Atan was a disk that had extended lines from it various points in someone's life in someone's act actions in someone's family have various lines coming from a center point the megaliths were a culmination of each individual major site had lines extending out connecting to other places other megaliths fixed geographical locations the rock of gibraltar khufu everest sri lanka the temple mound were the location of king solomon's temple the cave of bethlehem around the globe connection points fixed points mountaintops mouths of rivers fixed points megalithic infrastructure medusa could turn you to stone megalithic infrastructure medusa was a, turned to a snake snake dragon megalithic infrastructure we know as a matter of fact the, the hyksos left egypt traveled up and around the middle east and did their best to hit and conquer athens they did, they did this innumerable times xerxes the Mar battle of marathon the persians name changed from a hyksos descended culture wanted to attack Athens, Athens was the goal twice. So Marathon, our 26.4 mar mile marathon, is named after one of those battles where the Persians were trying to take Athens. The Battle of the 300, exactly the same thing. That battle is named after the Persians trying to take Athens. The Persians succeeded in taking Athens in the Middle Ages. They owned, the Muslims owned Athens for a while. They had to be, it was vicious battles trying to get the, the to, kick the, to kick the Muslims out. Hitler, Adolf Hitler, one of, his, one of his primary goals was to take Athens. The Roman Empire, one of their primary goals was to take Athens. And behaviorally speaking, we now know why. Medusa is best known for her head covered with snakes. As we have already learned, snakes is a political spun reference to the pillars of a megalith. So the Medusa having snakes from her head, that was a crown indicating pillars so does anyone else in Christianity have a crown of thorns have a crown of pillars well first Jesus was given a crown of, of thorns p small pillars and so that connects Medusa and the pillars of me of a megalith with Jesus Christ himself it also in Scandinavia there is a a saint her name was Lucia Lucia which means light who was martyred for her Christian beliefs that she wore a a wreath a defined area wreath as a crown and there's candles from that two four five six seven candles sticking from the from the wreath up so we know as a matter of fact that wreath her that martyr wore 
the code on her head. Knowledgeable or not knowledgeable, that's completely beside the point. Amber, vertical, defined land. North, and remember, in Old North, in Old English, and in previous languages, North did not mean compass bearing, it meant Polaris. So, it meant sun, it meant vertical. So you have the Norwegian martyr with the crown of pillars. You have Jesus with thorn pillars. Now, you have Medusa with a crown of thorns, a crown of pillars, a crown of snakes. In ancient history, Hecate from Greece had a crown of pillars. That same exact, those same exact pillars were what the designer of the Statue of Liberty added to Liberty's crown. Liberty's crown, the, the pillars, are a direct reflection off of Hecate. And Hecate is most likely from pre Dorian invasion of the Ionian Peninsula, the Aegean, pre the Aegean conquest, between 1550 and 12, 1100 BC, you have the goddess of Lower Egypt, whose her hometown was in a town called P.E. Now, we remember back to this entire situation with, with the megaliths, the name of the pyramid that bisects the nativity, the pharaoh's name was P.E.P.I. the first. P.E.P.I. And the town was called P.E. Now, another name for it would be D.E.P.I. D. 3500 B.C. to 2500 B.C. D.P. That's close enough linguistically, phonetically, to be able to change from a D to a P. So you have P.E.P.I. That's the hometown of Wedget. W E D J E T, Wedget. That specific goddess is not really a goddess, but that's not the point. It's a symbol of Lower Egypt. And that symbol was a female that was half female, half snake. So, we have Wedget, female, half snake. So in Indo-European language, things are not identified by being realistically half human, half bull, half snake, half what have you. That was just the, the, the depiction of Eve. Well, how do I know that's Eve? Well, without the letters E, V, and E, or the letters A, D, A, M, to connect a person with a thing, with the religion being Christian, pagan, Buddhist, Muslim, Catholic, Baptist, Mormon. How do you connect those without the words, without the letters Mormon, without the letters Christian, without the letters I-S-L-A-M? How do you connect that? Well, you connect it by half human and half whatever they're aligned with. And you come up with a universal symbol that is that connects their being the person, the, the, the two-legged person, with whatever they're aligned with. If it's not an animal type thing, like Jacob, his symbol is a bull, ECU's symbol is a sheep, the, the people devoted, devoted to and in, interacted with and experts with megaliths 
would have some type of a, a snake and or a dragon as part of their half human half dragon half human half snake or a human carrying a snake that's how you identified a person with their alignment with their education a doctor would have a caduceus which is interesting because it's a, a, a staff wings on the top with intertwining snakes the DNA spiral is a double helix which is fairly close to the 1000 BC almost guaranteed earlier because it's that symbol came from Greece came to Greece on the on the in the the conquest of the Hyksos and they carried it from Egypt and those that symbol the the caduceus is in Egypt at 2000 3000 BC so the Egyptians had a pretty good idea about the DNA spiral why because it's in their information it's it's in their symbology it's carved into stone on their walls they just did not call it deoxyribonucleic acid they called it something else they had a mathematics that our culture can barely understand let alone be able to repeat it's only been in the last seven to ten years that Google Earth thank you very much Google Earth has enabled the world to be able to access a global position be able to zoom in and out of a real-time map of the globe and be able to measure from point to point accurately well that measure that simple little teeny tiny little measurement ruler proves that the megaliths were an extremely complicated and layered measurement measurement device that we can only prove that they, it it existed how to how to how, us in the modern age trying to align two doorways across a thousand miles is not quite impossible but it's close we can do it as long as we have enough coordination and satellite phones and video conferencing and real-time satellite information and possibly the help of the International Space Station to be able to so they took so it's taken it is it would take us phones video satellites possibly the International Space Station and the World Wide Web five layers of five pieces of technology that did not exist four decades ago as complicated as, as they need to be in order to be able to you know you cannot run a NASCAR race with a, with a Model A Model T or a Model whatever you can run a NASCAR race with a variety of engines a variety of cars they were built in the 20s and 30s if you soup them up a little bit because some Rolls-Royce and, uh, and other engines were really really good and they could move very fast for short distances I would assume that you could you could soup up a Rolls-Royce from say 1920s or 30s and it could run right next to a stock car or an Indian or a Formula One and be able to actually keep up for at least a few miles a cart with a motor take the take the horses off and put a motor on and it's more of a of a cart than a motor than, than a car can't get that's not it's not possible to to do a race with anything in the 1920s with that they operate on two different speeds 10 miles an hour was fast well 20 miles an hour 10 20 years later was fast 30 years later we have a whole lot faster so the technology that existed before three decades ago was not capable of lining up two doorways 100 miles away 100 miles apart 200 miles apart a thousand miles apart 6,000 miles apart across the globe apart 
and aligned them perfectly. This technology could, the megalithic technology could, and it repeated a million times with zero error in their calculation. Our calculations are great if they're within 10% of good. Their calculations are were on the atomic level. There, it's difficult to compare their technology versus our technology because theirs is so is still so far advanced. We can barely contemplate it, let alone be able to figure out how to repeat it. Their the applications of their technology. Their applications of, of, of what they did f filtered down through the cultures that, conquer, that they were conquered by. Why were they conquered? Simply is the answer. One, Newton's third law, e equal and opposite reaction. And two, if you have insanely advanced technology for, from our point of view, The Concorde is no longer flying. America has lost its ability to fly into space twice. The there's a number of, of advanced technologies that were lost for a variety of conquest and arrogance and other reasons. 100% repeatable pattern. So they could have been back then they could have been slightly more pacifistic and the enemy the entire cultural enemy would stop at nothing to to genocide so you have a culture that stops at nothing to genocide versus a culture that's that's pacifistic well eventually the conqueror will take advantage of the holes in the defenses of the pacifist and it might take a couple thousand years, it might take four thousand years, but the cultures that are pa more pacifistic, no matter how advanced their technology is, they will leave holes in their defenses and they will then be conquered. City of Pillars, Jesus, Crown of Pillars, Christian Martyr, Norwegian, Crown of Pillars, Wedget, Crown of Pillars, Jesus, crown of pillars. Medusa, crown of snakes, pillars. The Pepe city in the Pepe the first, linguistically connected. Pillars. Being a megalith, it was a remodeled megalith. The Pepe the first, the Pharaoh Pepe the first, remodeled into his pyramid, and the causeway was kept. The causeway was kept mostly intact, and that causeway bisects the nativity. Which Hecate is pictured with snakes. Medusa is half female, half snake. The symbol of Eve was half female, half snake in Indo-European language. Because the only way to illustrate for an illiterate culture that was used to, that ne needed to see pictures to be able to understand what, what they were looking at, they had to see a half of a human, so that's a human, and what are, what is that human aligned to? What where, where's that human attached to? What is their what is their thing? What is their 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 philosophy, what is their religion, what is their cultural alignment, what is their belief system, what is their power base. Well, for Eve it would be a snake, for Adam it would be pillars, since he was the guardian of the longhouse, longhouse being made of pillars. For reference to that, the Kaaba has three pillars as, a, as, a, as the center support structure. The three pillars in the Hajj, the, 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 throw, the, throw stones at the pillars. Three pillars. 
Muhammad has, has pillars associated with him. Jesus has pillars associated. He was born below a megalith. He was crucified on a wooden pillar. And he was buried below for th oh, three days. Three days below a megalith. The Medusa could read your life in the stone, turn you into stone. Pillars of the megalith. The Norwegian princess. Crown of pillars. That's how the nativity was found. That's how the wise men arrived at the specific location at the specific time they followed the code. The code being the same code that Amenhotep IV used in his drawings, in, in his reliefs, sun in the sky, Lines from the lines from the Aten down to, down to him, and then a defined base, vertical, amber, sacred defined area. In Latin, that has a defined name. It means Northumberland. In Gaelic, Northumberland translates to Y R Hen Ogle D D. At first, this picture might seem confusing, because there's so much going on over a extremely long period of time that it might seem excessively confusing. But in truth, it's very, very simple. It has a very simple flow pattern. You first start with God, the symbol circle in the upper left-hand side, and then you have the vertical line back and forth that goes from God to Adam and then down to Earth, because obviously Adam was exiled from heaven, so therefore he had to come to earth, as in vertical descending down from the Garden of Eden to earth. And that process is what established the beginning of monotheism. Now, that process was only replaced by the aspects of what Noah did. Noah listened intently to God and created a boat in the middle of no water and the closest water was too far away and the boat was the ark was way too big so therefore it seemed crazy but there was a plan so Noah achieved what needed to be achieved and so the symbol of that achievement is the compass north south east west which, if you pay attention to uh, the Bible, Genesis chapter 1, chapter, uh, sentence 1 and sentence 2, in the beginning, God creates the heavens, arrow up, the left side of Adam, arrow up, and earth, arrow down. And the next sentence is, God flies over the waters. Well, to be able to make water, you have to be able to use four elements, which are the, a symbolic representation of the four directions. You have south, hydrogen, then bounces with north, oxygen, that goes to east, fire, catalyst. The three of the, them achieve their goal and make water, west. So you now have the very, very basics of the compass bearing north, south, east, west. Why this is important is, is that at either this time or previous, as I have discussed, the pyramids are a direct result of the megalithic infrastructure, megalith being Stonehenge, bottom left corner, and the infrastructure, because directly above Stonehenge, bottom left corner, is the infrastructure of Stonehenge as it uh, applies and works with Woodhenge. Stonehenge is just to the left, to the west, water, the old rock, the planet, and Woodhenge is to the east, 
trees interact with the sun. So that would be east. So you have wood hinge east and rock west. The pilgrims would come to Stonehenge via a, the northeast causeway that happens to bisect Cambridge. And as they come down the causeway, they enter Stonehenge and do the ref reflections of the past stuff. Whatever their submarines were, we have no idea, but we can infer from what how we would re interact with the past as to how they interacted with the past. They would then travel from Stonehenge, either by foot, a footpath to Woodhenge, or by boat, depending on which path they were intending to take, and then arrive at Woodhenge. And what do trees do? Trees are in the present and the future, with an understanding of the past within their rings. But what you can see is the bark of this year, which is the reflection of the past, and then the amber, the sap, coming out to build next year's ring. The Narmer plate indicates that the those two creatures with their necks intertwined in a circle, Stonehenge in a circle, as in top left-hand corner, there's 100,000 megaliths from Ireland to Japan, from Africa, different parts of Africa have megaliths, up to the Arctic Circle. So this is a global reach, as you've seen pictures of. That global reach of the megaliths, most, of, most all of them are either circles, or you have a dolmen, which dolmens and Jesus are very connected. There was a dolmen over his birth, the cave of his birth, there was a dolmen above that. There was a dolmen above the crucifixion, his tomb for three days. And he formed part of the dolmen at the crucifixion, where he was part of the wood hinge, the wood dolmen, along with two thieves. Which is interesting because three, if you look at the bottom of the middle part of the bottom of the screen, you see is Rai El. Or in Egyptian, is Isis, Ra, and El. Isis being feminine to the left, Ra to the right, and the balance between L. The balance between, that's how a magnet works. The, so you have Israel being a three-part magnet. The dolmen that you see above Jesus, above, that, above Jesus is his tomb, at least a representation of his tomb. Above that, two dolmens, the one to the right is the one over where his tomb was and in the the uncanonized and not very flattering representation of the situation of early Christianity as in first century, second century Christianity There was a story about one of his closest apostles went to his tomb and there was Roman guards in front of it, radically unheard of in all Roman history, one taking the body down because the point of the crucifixion is not to bury the body, the, bo the point of the, to the crucifixion is to have the body rot there for four months as a warning to everyone else, do not do this or you will be you'll be replacing the corpse on the the wooden pillar with yourself. And the code that that writer talks about is talks about a, a booming voice from on top of the 
a pillar, or in this case it could have been a dolmen, and all kinds of other interesting information from that source. The dolmen to the left is the dolmen representation of the crucifixion, where he was stabbed, not crucified, by a blade held by a Roman soldier. That Roman, that Roman officer was most likely, based on circumstantial evidence, Roman law, Jewish law, and the like, that soldier was named Longinus, but that name is was a title. Now we know that in titles, especially in hieroglyphic Egyptian Judaism and the like, that leaders were often given more than one name. And they were referred to that name in various connotations, which exists right to, the, to this very second, with the leader of a nation is called Mr. President, Mr. Emperor, King, Prime Minister, so on. That tradition from present back to ancient history it has an unbroken sequence. So just because the the person who stabbed Jesus went by the name of Longinus does not mean actually that was actually his name. That could have been one of his names and or one of his titles being the, the carrier of the sword of Longinus. The sword of Longinus as we have covered most likely is the the blade of Jacob that was created and were marked on based on the markings and the information found on the plates of destiny from the Tower of Babel, otherwise known as the Ziggurat of Eridu, which is the Ziggurat of Eridu is 20 miles west of the city of Ur. So you have west, plates of destiny, and you have east, the attacking army of Terah and his son Abraham and his other sons, and they sack it, the city, take the information, take the, raz the city, and take all the war booty, and go to Egypt, where Abraham then builds the, the temple to God in stone, instead of just being a wooden tabernacle, and he, t he builds that tabernacle east of El Bethel. El Bethel is a rock formation. The rock formation of El Bethel being exactly in the same parameters as a hundred other Judaism and Christian references, the things are the wood is to the east and the rock is to the west. So building the part rock, part wood El Bethel, the permanent infrastructure of the tabernacle, to the east of a piece of rock is critical and important. The Is-Ra-El, Isis, Ra, and El, El being the wrote, written about, documented from the Hyksos at 1600 BC forward, that is the name of, that is the, that is what, at least in those writings, that is what God has said, you can call me the. El is the. So you have El between the Ra being a representation of the sun being east and Isis being a representation of stone to the west. Isis or Is being negative polarity or electron and L between being neutron as in neutral. The neutrality between the opposite poles. 
three. So you have God to Noah, and that's three. God, Adam, Noah. Noah, Abraham, Jesus. That's three. You have one set of three and another set of three. And then Jesus to Antioch is another set of three. And then from Antioch to the Vatican is another set of three. The nativity is bisected by the Pepin the First Causeway, which you can see there. They compressed it down so that you can see the you can see the the causeway easier, but the animation that you just saw, the red line, shows definitively using Google Earth that the middle right side of the Pippin the first causeway bisects the center of that cave and bisects the center where that bronze plaque is. So we now have very clearly the Dolmite, which is a megalith, the megalithic infrastructure on the left side of the page was put in, started to be constructed about the time that Adam was being kicked out. So it is fair to say that it is a strong possibility that Adam is the one who built the megalithic infrastructure. He, his children, his grandchildren, they set out to build the, the megalithic infrastructure obviously to reflect some type of informa information that they understood from the Garden of Eden in the in the megaliths Stonehenges from around the world indicating that the center of the Garden of Eden that square at the center of the Garden of Eden was a megalith and if you look at Genesis chapter 2 you will see that the sentence structure of the tree, it's three trees, not one. The tree of knowledge, the tree of good and evil. The fourth square is the square of construction, of organizational infrastructure. That's Adam's square. That's He was the king. He, was the, he built the tabernacle on that square around the tree of construction. And he then used the other three trees to weave the pattern of time. The warp and, warp and weft of weaving was from those, those trees into, because when Adam was given, was, was breath of life into Adam, he was put in charge of being guardian of this planet. Guardian tabernacle, guardian of the longhouse, guardian of the longhouse, the, t the, the tabernacle is the definition of the guardian of the longhouse. Nazareth and Pharaoh mean exactly the same thing, guardian of the longhouse. The longhouse is a tabernacle. And the tabernacle is a close enough to what Adam could remember copy of what the Garden of Eden looked like. The nativity is extremely complicated but if you break it down into individual por por pieces portions parts and be able to, to slowly just connect the dots one dot at a time you can see the the complexity and the chaos make a great deal of sense so you start at the top with God then come down to Adam and then that forms a square that that's a square as in from vertical up down to earth is a straight line. From the straight line of Noah out to Abraham, that's a square. Why is a square important? A square is important because Jesus was a carpenter. And having things on the square, plumb and balanced, is extremely important to every carpenter. It's also extremely important because the descendant of Noah was the first well-known person to be able to start working with stone and wood and help create the infrastructure of the megaliths, which his work 
taught from Adam down to the infrastructure of the megaliths down to the infrastructure of the remodeled pyramids and Pepe the first to the nativity it's being on the square from God down to earth and from earth squared off to wander the earth is extremely important to the formulation of monotheism and one of the organizations of monotheism that formulated before Noah was the organization of masonry. The images to the middle left, that's Stonehenge. Well, Stonehenge, the west of Stonehenge, Stonehenge. To the east is Woodhenge. So if you ask any mason in the world, they'll, they'll say, I'm a traveler going from the west to the east. Archaeology has told us that the ceremony is very clear that the ceremony at 4000 BC started at Stonehenge and traveled east, connecting Stonehenge with this passage from the Pepin Pyramid to the Nativity, because the Pepin Pyramid is west and made of stone and remodeled from the from the Stonehenge that used to be there stone to the Church of the Nativity is most likely made of wood. And the church that's there now is partially made of wood. So you have wood you have stone west, wood east. Wood interacts is requires the sun to be able to interact and, and to to create photosynthesis, trees need the, the sun. So the sun is a perfect so the sun is a perfect symbol, perfect interaction with for the, for a, for a tree. Use the tree to, to symbolize the sun and the cycles of nature and the the and the year. Jerusalem. The Nativity itself is a very long and very complicated journey from Stonehenge through Egypt. The image directly to the, to the right of Stonehenge, bottom left corner, that is Egypt with its with the top being east and the bottom being west that spread out that that accordion pleated causeway lines coming from it which the pip in the first pyramid is only one of as i've shown you khufu bisects everest Kefri bisects Sri Lanka, Mankara bisects those pyramids bisect things of extreme importance, either to measure from, to and from, and or one holy X place, or in this place, in this case, a is or an ancient hieroglyphic, one place to the west is Isis or there's no direction directionality when it comes to Israel so the bottom graphic is Rael being one direction Isis being one direction Ra being the other and the journey between being El being the name of God the situation of the bottom right corner, that's the Caffrey Pyramid. Yes, there's a circle at the pyramid, the causeway, and then, the, and then another circle at the current pyramid. But as I said, the pyramids were remodeled. Whether the 
powers that be want to acknowledge the fact that the evidence shows very clearly remodeling that's entirely up to whether they want to be in the in the boat of the pre-Galileo or post-Galileo the pre-earth is flat or the post-earth is flat the pre time where knowledge education information was restricted to exactly what the powers that be wanted or it was what's the actual evidence please the actual evidence is that the megaliths were in place a long time before the pyramids were and it is reflected within the framework of the pyramids what the causeways what the the megalithic infrastructure could have used to look like by having at least part of it not remodeled, not destroyed, not completely obliterated. The Narmer Plate, that Narmer Plate is an interesting plate because it, it was written at 3200 BC, which indicates strongly that that plate, the megaliths were still strongly in place at 3200 BC as in they'd been there for hundreds if not thousands of years before 3200 BC. The creature that has a circle, the, the, the creatures that have a circle, a circled neck, like Stone, as in Stonehenge, that's a dragon. Now the reason why I say it's a dragon is because all the megaliths are oriented to Polaris. They're not oriented to compass bearing north, they're oriented to the star north. The problem is, is that way back in, the, in those times, Polaris was the constellation Draco. The constellation Draco translates to, in the Latin, dragon. That is the same constellation, that is the same reference, that is the same interaction that Dracula had on his breastplate, and he, he was the knight of the Order of Dragon. So Dracula means son in the Order of the Knight of Dragons. 50,000 people in his army going up against a Ottoman Empire whose army was more than a million battle-hardened strong. You need some psychological warfare to be able to deal with when you're outnumbered 100,000 to 1. Vlad was given that title by the Pope with a specific order to protect Europe from the invading Muslims because the Muslims, Ottoman Turks, were going to wipe out Christian Europe and replace Christian Europe with Muslim Europe. The connection between the dragon, the order of the dragon that Dracula is named after Prince Vlad Walica the third and Adam is plain if you combine the definition for a megalith pointing at the constellation Draco dating from the time of Adam through Noah through Abraham because he was in e Egypt a lot and it's in Egypt south of Hebron south of the Pharaoh that he established El Beth El east. So El Beth El was west and he built the stone temple to God east of El Beth El which is west. West traveling east. On the west side of the Nile between Saqqara and Giza. The Atan from 2,000 years later, from roughly 28 to roughly 1350, that connection between the linguistics and the buildings, the disk of the Atan shows the parameters of where one of the Israels used to be. That disk shows the parameters. The 
fingers coming off are, are horizontal, not vertical. Horizontal explanation of where the causeways were. So the 18th dynasty, at least Amenhotep IV, had a good chance of knowing that the causeway infrastructure was there and how extensive it was connected to the megaliths, connected to Noah, connected to Adam, connected to the entire megalithic grid, which would connect later on, 1300 years later, but he may or may not have known that. But the connection to the dragon is Vlad was given the, the order of the dragon to defend Europe against the Muslims. The Muslims are a name change culture from Isiu's line. Isiu to Hyksos, Hyksos to Hittite, Hittite to Dorian, Dorian to a subgroup of Greek become known as Romans. Another subgroup of the Middle Eastern become Muslims under Muhammad. But his line, he was born in Mecca, which used to be a, and still is, most of the archaeology is still in place, Mecca is still a megalithic infrastructure with a dozen megalithic sites all the way all around Mecca. The stoning of the pillars, the three pillars, three, comes up again. The stoning of the pillars is stoning a megalith. The three pillars in the Kaaba is a, me is a, is a wooden megalith. The same type of megalith that was that Jesus was possibly born on, under and buried under for three days. The pillars in the Kaaba wood from the west traveling east. So the dragon of the armor plate, that circle strongly indicates that the megaliths were hundreds of years old by the time Narmer came to power. So the north, not compass bearing north, but Polaris north, as in Adam vertical god, is clearly indicated in this entire thing. There the number of times that vertical pointing at Polaris is indicated in these pictures is almost all of them. The pillars of Stonehenge, both top left and bottom left, the wooden pillar that Jesus was crucified on, the wooden the stone pillars of the Dolmites, the very, very tall churches and cathedrals of the Christian faith in Egypt. The current city of Heliopolis, although it's been absorbed by Cairo, Cairo is a name change city. What its previous names were has semi been lost to history, but the city of Heliopolis, previous to 3500 BC conquest, was named the city of Pillars. The city of Pillars was the capital city of Lower Egypt and it had massive megaliths all over the place, both Stonehenges and Dolmites. It was similar to Mecca as in the amount of megalithic structures that were going on in there. It was conquered by Upper Egypt. They tore down most of the megaliths and replaced the megaliths with their own temples. But when Upper Egypt conquered Lower Egypt, a little bit of the infrastructure stayed in place. It is rumored by legend 
that Heliopolis, or in this case, the city of Pillars, the capital city of Pillars, was constructed by, or at least remodeled by, and or may possibly even conquered by, way back when, before Noah, Adam himself. He may have built it, he may have conquered it, who knows. But the point is, is that the city of Pillars, Heliopolis, Adam, the infrastructure of the megaliths, the infrastructure of the global network that the megaliths and dolomites were part of, Adam, city of pillars, the pillars of throughout all three major monotheistic faiths, Judaism, Christianity, Muslim, Islam, the pillars are a key aspect all of all of it. And all those different aspects, all those different fingers, the, the causeways that stretch out from the area between Saqqara and Giza on the west side of the Nile, play themselves out to the east side of those causeways at the nativity. The nativity becomes an encapsulated micro concept regarding what's going on in Egypt is was rebuilt thanks to the exodus in Jerusalem the previous conquests the previous exodus is the the Hyksos having to leave when they were coup d'etat by Jacob's line the, by the Israelites in 1550 BCE the Hyksos retreating to their capital city of Avanti and then regaining power at 1310, 1320. Corrupting Tut into, cha into changing sides in one way or the other. Could be he had a blade to his neck and he, he didn't have a, a large enough army around him to take it, tell his advisors to go away because mom and grandma, the armies and such, were by legend and by gene genetics in Northumberland creating themselves a new kingdom. Why were they in Northumberland creating themselves a new kingdom? By legend, because they knew the Hyksos were not going to back down. So they created a plan to met to be able to defeat the Hyksos on their home territory, not in the Hyksos assumed home territory, which is not true because the Hyksos invaded from Mecca the Hyksos are, is defined as the Shepherd Kings, which is an insult, but it's no different than the insult, the Shepherd Kings is no different than the insult of sheep speak, which is what the definition of barbarian is. Ba, ba, is, the de is where the definition of barbarian came from. So it's a fairly, de barbarian is a pretty heavy duty insult to Isiu's line, because Isiu, his symbol was the sheep. His brother, on the other hand, Jacob, later crowned Israel, his symbol was the cow. And he became king of the west side of the Nile between Saqqara and Giza when he had a battle with something or somebody on at Mecca and had to, he won, but he had to retreat, or he won, but he had to go to his kingdom which was on the west side of the Nile between Saqqara and Giza. And it's that maneuvering. He's the one primarily responsible for the majority of the megaliths being, starting to be remodeled into pyramids. Evidence. Well, at least linguistically evidence and biblically evidence. When Jacob traveled to Lutz, which is Memphis, Egypt, west side of the Nile between Saqqara and Giza. He traveled northwest, and if you travel northwest of where Lutz used to be, which is currently underwater, you either hit, you first hit where the step pyramid is, and then a little bit, and then a few miles later, you hit the southern end of Giza. If you draw a line straight through, you'll see a line bisecting Memphis, Lutz, 
with a pyramid halfway between and then the Mankari pyramid. He was northwest of Lutz when he went upon the light place. Jesus Christ, light. Light is a repeat pattern here. Jesus, Christ, a, a teacher of the light. Jacob lit upon the light place, slept, and then had dreamed that he needed to remodel. Jacob used stones as a pillow. He slept on the stones. He then remodeled the stones, northwest of Lutz, northwest of Memphis, into his Jacob's Ladder, a area to ascend and descend from heaven on his Jacob's Ladder, building with stone on the west, then going east to wood, is a repeat pattern through from Noah to now. All encapsulated, all micro oriented down at the nativity the from the west to the east from the, the stones of the west to the to the wood of the east the wise men from the east masters from the east coming with gifts and the gifts contain the code the dolmite three Father, Son, Holy Spirit, three. Constellation Draco, Constellation Dragon, a dragon being a Pope approved title. Dragon used to be a sacred animal, sacred mythological animal. They don't have short roofs. They all have tall, tall roofs. And the, the cathedrals are Notre Dame, Westminster Abbey, the Vatican, the Sistine Chapel. The ceilings are all 50 feet high. Or more. The vertical aspect of this situation indicates that the connection to Adam, the connection from Adam to God, the symbology is present from the beginning, megaliths, to present. The nativity is important because the nativity encapsulates forward by 2,000 years to our time and back to the beginning of the megaliths, Adam helped create the infrastructure that became the megalithic infrastructure to copy best as he could the infrastructure of the Garden of Eden.